Today we're going to be talking about bacterial inoculation. We do this for identification of our bacteria, separation, identification, so we can diagnose what's going on. We commonly call this streaking plates. Now when we pour up our auger, we pour it into a petri dish. But once we have the auger, we call it a plate, an auger plate. I don't know why that is. But. So I drew you a picture here of a streaking plate. I thought you might like that. He's got his little tennis shoes, and he's not wearing clothes, so he's a streaking plate. Okay, now the next step here we're going to look at is taking care of your, uh, getting your culture inoculation. So you have to obtain a sample and in a clinical setting it might be an injury, an abscess, any kind of infected place. In the lab it may either be a known sample that you get you know, we buy at the laboratory or it may be an everyday thing such as a water fountain or your mouth if it's allowed for your lab. Now what you do is you remove the sterile cotton swab from the culturette and swab it in your sample and then carefully put the culturette back in without touching anything else. And then you're going to close the sample and uh, put it in some sort of refrigeration. Now if you're getting something from home you just can't put a sample of something disgusting in your refrigerator. It might contaminate your food and besides that, uh, it could cause a divorce, and that's a bad thing to have to get a divorce over. I want you to, I can't overemphasize, if you're taking a urine culture, say you catheterize someone and you're gonna send it down for culture, it's got to be sent now, or at least put in the refrigerator, preferably just take it to the lab immediately, because urine changes over time. And the bacteria that are in it now are not the same bacteria that are in it 30 minutes from now. Now, I have this lovely picture of these toilets. And most of you hopefully use a toilet like the one on the right. It's a nice, clean, lovely toilet that's been cleaned and you use it and then you flush it. Now, if you never flushed it, it would smell different. Uh, that one particular one has got barf and turds and vomit and there's a bunch of flies hanging around. What happens as far as the urine goes is the bacteria that's in the, in the urine, urine sample starts to break down the urea and the creatinine. It breaks them down until you get ammonia and the ammonia uh, stinks. If you've ever been in a house with a cat box that's not well cared for. If you're not smelling turds, you're smelling ammonia. It is real bad. Okay, now, after we've got our culture ready, we're gonna streak it. You're gonna need to light your Bunsen burner before you ever start your plate streaking. Now, by lighting the burner, when you light it, you've gotta be sure that you've got a flame going on your lighter before you turn the gas on because if you don't okay let's just say you turn the Bunsen burner on there's no safety on these things the gas just starts coming out you go across the room you look for a lighter you talk to your friends check your email text somebody by that time the room's full of gas now you go over there and light that burner and it might just explode the whole world uh, maybe not an atomic explosion, but it, you can actually get killed this way. Certainly burned, and it's not a good way to make an A in lab at the very least. Okay, once you have your burner lit, you're ready to streak your plate. So you're going to take your nice culturette, and you're going to open up your petri dish in such a way that it's put up like a sneeze guard at a salad bar so germs can't fall down. If you don't do it this way, your plate will become contaminated. So I have a picture here of some lovely young ladies at a sneeze, at a, well, at a sneeze fest. They're actually at a salad bar, but they're 
got their head under the sneeze guard, which means if they sneeze or just breathe, they're putting germs on the salad. And then when you eat the salad, you're eating their sneeze. Mm. Okay, now you've cultured, you've spread your uh, initial sample out, and I'll show you exactly how in just a minute. And then you're going to have to heat your culture loop up until it is really, really, really hot. And you see when it's red, it is hot. And then you're going to lift your plate up, uh, your auger plate lid up in sneeze guard fashion, and touch that hot, blistering hot loop to a part that's not been inoculated yet. And what it will do is uh, it'll quench it and it, it won't be too hot, kill your bacteria. And you'll hear a little It's a very satisfying sound. I keep scaring my cat every time I do this though. Okay, now, so as you're gonna culture things here, if you see the black arrows, this was your initial culture you streaked. The red, you've taken a freshly, a freshly fried loop and you're gonna run that uh, loop through the black and down all the way down to the bottom of the plate. And then you're going to go back into the fire, get it hot again, quench it again, and you're going to run it in the direction that the blue is. And then you're going to heat it up again, put it back in, and then you're going to run it in the direction that the green is. So each time you're going, you're actually going from a place that has got a lot of bacteria to less and less and less. So we get a thinner and thinner culture. Always at the end, be sure that you sterilize your loop. If you don't, then you have a problem because your person may pick it up and be contaminated with whatever bacteria was on it. I actually had this one really weird kid in class. He only stayed one semester, but he picked up one of those culturettes, knowing nothing about it, and put it in his mouth. And I kind of freaked out about that, but I knew my students had at least sterilized it. Okay, now you got to label these plates. In a hospital setting, you'll have a, a barcode with a name and then a bar encoded thing that you will match up with the patient's a bracelet that they're wearing so that you know you've got the right patient. In a lab, you're gonna probably take a little Sharpie marker and write on it. Now you've streaked this plate and you're gonna turn it upside down. Now the reason for this is there's going to be condensation in this nice warm incubator. And if you have your culture upside down, the rain falls down off the auger into the lid and all is well. If you turn it the other way around, rain falls off the lid down into the auger and you have a juicy yucky mess and you ruin your culture and you have to start over which takes a couple of days okay now you're going to then put your auger and you're going to put them upside down like i just said into your incubator and you can stack these i just saw their label they can be stacked it doesn't hurt a thing they're sterile on the outside and you're gonna set it to 37 celsius for most cultures 37 celsius calculates to 98.6 fahrenheit which is human body temperature now what this allows is you to have isolated bacteria if you look at the thickest area those are the first areas of streaking if you look at the thinnest areas you have individual colonies and each colony came from one bacteria now some of these you may not have all little white round colonies you may have a pink one and a yellow one and a white one and they're going to be completely different bacteria so you really want to be sure that you have the bacteria uh, separated out enough so that you actually can use it 
for your culture and you know what you've got. Now, if the infection is a mixed culture, then you're going to want to take each of those visibly different looking things and restreak them out and grow them again. And then, I think I've already got a thing up on it, but then you would want to do a culture and susceptibility to know what antibiotics it would respond to. But after the point or two now, you're going to take one of those little colonies with a loop, which you'll have to sterilize first, and you're going to put it on a microscope and thin it out just as much as you can, gram stain it, and then we'll look at it. Okay, that's it for this.